Hey boys and girls, it's your teacher here, Miss Star, fifth grade teacher from Sally Hummel Elementary School. I'm so excited today to be teaching you one of our guidebook lessons from the unit, the Birch Bark House. You got that right. We're getting ready to continue exploring the Native Americans and their way of life when they first came to America. Are you ready? All right, I can't wait to get into this lesson. All right, boys and girls, so we have learned about the lifestyle and the livelihood of the Plains Indians. We also identified the two main ideas of the text and we supported those main ideas with details and text evidence. On today, we're gonna listen to a read aloud from Before Columbus, the Americas of 1491. We're gonna determine the meaning of unknown words and phrases from our text. And we're also gonna discuss how the Native Americans changed the landscape so that they would be able to harvest food and all of those different types of things. You guys ready? All right. You're going to need your reading log and a vocabulary chart handout. And that can be found in your green resource packet. All right, so listen aloud as I read just a little excerpt on pages 91 to 92, okay? And then you're going to read the rest of it with your partner for silent reading. Fire, and we're reading here about controlled burning. Fire has two main sources, lightning and people. In North America, lightning fire is most common in the Western mountains. In other places, in the past, Indians controlled fire. They carried flints, hard stones that they struck together to create sparks and light their torches. When you think of Indians hunting, you probably picture them using bows and arrows. Torches, uh, though, were just important. Native Americans use flame to chase down all kinds of game. And so when we're talking about game here, kids, we're not talking about Fortnite or Minecraft, okay? We're actually talking about game, like when you're hunting game, okay? So deer was their big part of the game in the Northeast. Alligators is what they hunted when they were in the Everglades. Buffalo, when they went to the Great Plains. Edible grasshoppers, ooh, I don't know if I would have been able to survive. They had that in the deserts of Utah and Nevada. Rabbits hop, hop when they're in California and moose in Alaska. Okay, Thomas Jefferson described how the Indians used fire in the hunt. They made big rings in flame by setting fire to fallen leaves. Heat and flame gradually forced the animals to the center of the ring where the Indians could slaughter them with arrows, darts, and spears. So in the last part of our reading, I wanna really, really hope that you can put your thinking cap on and pay attention to what they're gonna do with the uh, fire. Native Americans also engineered their ecosystems to support game animals such as elk, deer, elk, and bear. By constantly burning over undergrowth, they encouraged a rich new growth of grasses, bushes, and other early stage vegetation that fed large numbers of plant eating animals. Okay, so that's the main part of our lesson today, boys and girls, is that when the Indians uh, used their rocks and they were able to uh, cause uh, controlled burning, then they were able to control their landscape. They were able to trick those animals to come into their landscape. And the next thing you know, there they had a buffalo. So they were able to use controlled burning to their advantage. All right. With your partner, I want you to complete the vocabulary handout for the following terms, ecosystem, control, burning, and harvesting, okay? So if you don't have a partner, you can do this on your own, boys and girls. Give yourselves just a minute to do that. All right. So great job on completing that. You should have wrote down that an ecosystem is a, are areas of lands with different temperatures, okay? One of our quotes says, the Native Americans also engineered their ecosystems to support game, such animals such as deer, elk, and bear. And this is found in our text today before Columbus, okay? Controlled burning, a fire that is set on purpose and is monitored. Okay, and so our word here is a fire. The controlled burning is ensured a steady supply of meat. So they weren't just going around saying, woo, 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 
out like a dragon and setting things on fire. Boys and girls, they were starting a fire. They used their leaves. They put the flint rocks together and they made the fire only in the area that they wanted to. Harvesting, okay, everybody loves harvest time. That's when all your crops and your fruit, food are gonna grow and so everybody's gonna get to much, much, much. In harvesting, that means to gather a crop for food. And so this is done in farming. The Indians who hunted bison in the east were harvesting a food source that they helped to create before Columbus, the Americas of 1491. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our other slide for just a moment, and we're gonna think and uh, read through some discussion questions. Okay, so let's think to ourselves. Identify the reason that man, the author of this book, provides um, some support to uh, back up the claim that the Indians were able to use controlled burning in order to harvest their crops. Let's think about what we see, okay? So we've identified some things in there, and as you are reading, you should have been able to think and you should have been able to know that the Native Americans burned and chopped thousands of acres uh, for maize. They probably burned and chopped mainly in the river valleys so that they would be close to the water. Water was a really, really big source for the Native Americans. Not only did they use it to bathe in and stay clean, but they also used it to fish, okay? And it was also a way to uh, travel and have messages uh, carried, okay? So in your reading log later on, we're gonna get to it after we get to my activity slide, we're going to respond to the following prompt. How did the Native Americans change the landscape of the New World? And we will be providing text evidence. Remember, text evidence can be found from the text, and our text here is before Columbus. All right, boys and girls, so here is just a bit of TWR for you. So we got some of our activities from the Birch Bark House Lesson six, TWR is the writing revolution. And what we have here is a scrambled sentence. And those scrambled sentences that we see represent some of the ideas that we, uh, some of the main ideas that we have discussed in our text about before Columbus, okay? So with a scrambled sentence, you're gonna have to take these words and you're gonna have to put them in order. The first tip that I have for you is to think of who, what, when, and where as you put together your sentence, okay? So the first thing is who. Let's look through this first sentence. It says, acres, thousands, the burned Americans, and chopped native of. So who, let's go through that sentence and pull out our who, okay? Let's see, we know that we've been talking about the Native Americans, so maybe we can start our sentence with that. So I want you to hear me and I want you to see me, you see me saying it and completing this, okay? So let's start off with Native Americans, okay? So that kind of answers our who. Let's put a check box there. What, what did the Native Americans do? Let's go through and find out the information, what did they do? What did they do? They burned and then they also chopped, okay? And we can use that and to put it together. Native Americans burned and chopped, okay? They burned and chopped. What did they burn and chop? Thousands, that comes next, thousands of we're gonna start writing on this side here. Thousands of, oops, sorry boys and girls, let's go back. It happens sometimes. Thousands of the acres, okay? So we have our period there. So now you see, you were able to tell who did what. We didn't really have a when and a where, but if I wanted to, I could have said um, uh, in the uh, in the America, so we're going in the America's of uh, 1491. Well, it probably wasn't about that time. We could have said in about the 1600s and then about the 1800s, somewhere in there, Native Americans burned and chopped thousands of acres, okay? Let's do one more, boys and girls, for TWR. 
We have our words here, Americans, important, was, native, maize, for, and crop. Okay, so put your thinking cap on and think about the strategy that I just gave you. We talked about who, what, when, and where. So let's think about that as we're trying to order our sentence, okay? All right? So who? And what? We're gonna start here with mud. what? Maze was and important crop for native Americans, okay? So we see then we were able to put our sentence together that now we're not starting with the Native Americans this time, we're starting it with maize, we're starting it with the actual corn crop. It was an important crop for the Native Americans. So I'm gonna give you just a moment to complete those last two sentences on your own for your TWR scramble sentences, okay? All right, boys and girls, you did a great job on your own. Let's erase our board here and let's look at the anticipated um, responses. All right, boys and girls, so you were able to finish with your um, TWR. You did a great job on that. Now what I want us to do is think about responding to the following prompt in our reading log. Our prompt says, how did the Native Americans change the landscape of the new world? And we're gonna be sure to include evidence to support the points that we make, okay? Girls, so now we're going to do an exercise called the um, expanded sentence. We're gonna just use this kernel sentence here, natives changed, okay? So this isn't a complete sentence. This is just two words, TWR strategy, kernel sentence, and it just says natives changed, okay? So we're gonna think, what did the natives change? When did the natives change? How did the natives change, okay? I wanna give you just a moment to think about what did they change, when did they change it, and how did they change it? So what did they change? They changed the what? Landscape, okay? When did they change it? All right. And how did they change it? We know that they changed it by using fire to control the land, okay? So boys and girls, you're gonna use this information to type in your completed, you're gonna use this information to type in your completed, um, your completed, expanded sentence and here we go. Natives change. Let's look how we ordered our sentence, okay? In the 1640s, that's our win. Number two, the natives did what? They changed. I put my three and my what? I put all that together. They changed the landscape of the world. How? By controlling fire to hunt and form the land, okay? So here's our expanded sentence. That means we took this sentence and we're gonna put it all together from just that little kernel sentence. In the 1640s, the natives changed the landscape of the world by controlling fire to hunt and form the land. So that sounds so much better just from our two bullet points, okay? Boys and girls, are you having a great time? We're going over, we're seeing the main ideas. And so now that we have our main idea, we wanna take just a moment to include some text evidence to support. Cause remember our um, question, our writing prompt did say to include details from the text to support your answer. So you have given your answer here. Now you need to back it up, okay? All right. 
So let's look at our text uh, excerpt here. I've taken a picture here so that you can see it because it's a little smaller. It's in my book. It says, this is an excerpt from Before Columbus, the book that we just read. We included this piece of text evidence here. By constantly burning the undergrowth, they encouraged a rich new growth of grasses, bushes, and other early stage vegetation that fed large numbers of plant eating animals. Okay, so look in the text. I have my magnifying glass. I'm looking in the text. You can say whatever you want, boys and girls, but if you don't have your text evidence to support your claim, then you don't really have any proof that the Native Americans did that, okay? Now look at my expanded sentence once I have included the piece of text evidence. It says, in the 1640s, the Native Americans changed the landscape of the world by controlling fire to hunt and form the land, period. Okay, in the text it states, by constantly burning the undergrowth, they encouraged a rich new growth of grasses, dot, 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 that fed large numbers of plant eating animals. And I ended in the quotation mark. I put that in there because these are not your words as, a, as an author, but these words belong to what? The book, these words belong to Charles C. Mann, okay, the author here. All right, so that was a great lesson for TWR. Boys and girls, let's take just a brain break, okay, and transform our minds. Sometimes we're going and going. Let's take a moment, reset. All right, ready to move on to our next thing here. Okay, so we responded to the prompt that in our reading log with using the TWR activities, you did scramble sentences. You also did the kernel sentence to provide evidence on how the Native Americans uh, changed the landscape, okay? So what I'd like for you to know is in this lesson, you discuss the ways that the Native Americans changed the new world. You also explained how man uses evidence to support the claims that makes when he is using our text, okay? I hope you had a great day. We had a good day. We had a good day. We had a jolly good day. I hope you have a jolly, you have a jolly, you have a jolly good day. See you next time.